Now that we know what a process is, let's see how we create processes. We're going to use a model called the fork exact model. Okay? So a uh, fork creates a copy of the current process, and exact v replaces the current process code and address space with the code for a different program. Okay, so fork creates a copy, an entire copy of the current process, and exact v um, replaces uh, the code and the data and the address space of the process with uh, uh, the code for a different program. Okay, and these two uh, services are what we call system calls. Okay, system calls is part of the operating system programming interface. Okay, so note that we're going to be doing uh, what Linux provides here, and Windows is slightly different, but the concepts are essentially the same. Okay, so and there are other system calls to do process management. For example, there's get PID, which returns an ID of the current process, the process that's calling the system call. There's exit, which just kills and, and ends a process. And there's wait and wait PID, which is used to synchronize processes um, running. Okay? So let's see what Fork does uh, in more detail. So it creates new processes. And uh, when you call Fork, Fork takes no parameters, and it returns this PID type, which is just the ID of the process that was newly, crea was newly created. Okay? So when you call, when a, say that we have this example here, you can call fork, and what fork does is it creates a new process that's identical uh, to the calling process, called the parent process, and it returns zero to the child process, and returns returns the child the child's process ID to the parent process. Okay, I know this might be getting a little confusing because it kind of is, uh, and the reason is that fork is unique because it's called once, but it returns twice. Because when you call, when you're calling, you have a process running, you call fork, okay? Now you're gonna replicate the process, it's going to have two processes here. This is the parent, and this is the child, and it's going to return um, the process ID to the parent, and it's going to return zero to the child. So um, in this example here, we call fork here then, and then we check. If the PID return is zero, that means that this is going to be executing the child. And if not zero, that's going to be executed in the parent, okay? So let me go just one more level of detail, okay? Suppose that we have a process N, and we're executing the piece of code that I just showed you. Okay, when we call fork, it's going to create a child process called M, okay? So, and they run the same program, right? Because it's an entire replica, byte for byte, and, and the entire state to a different process, but now they're both running at the same time, okay? So now uh, process and continues executing, so it's going to receive PID, right? The PID is going to receive M, which is the, the ID of uh, the child process, okay? And now the child process is running, and it's going to receive zero, okay? Great. So now uh, since uh, process N received uh, M, it's going to execute this side of Dave, okay? And this one's going to execute this one, so we're going to see hello from child. Pretty cool, isn't it? So um, which one is first? Well, we definitely know that this fork here executed before anything else. But which one is first? Well, as soon as the child process is creating, it could be anything. It's non-deterministic, really. Okay, so one could execute, but the only thing we know is that process n, up to the point where the fork is executed, process n executed first. So, um, so in this example, things to remember that the parent and, parent and child both run the same code, okay? So when we distinguish the child by the value return uh, from fork, okay? So which one runs after the fork, as I said before, is undefined, it's non-deterministic, okay? It has to be one of them, but you might run it multiple times, you might see different things, okay? So and one thing to note here is that they both start the same state, but after the fork, they both have a private copy of the state, okay? Same variables, same call stack, same file descriptors, and so on. But then, after that point, they can diverge the execution, right? Because that's what's gonna make this interesting. And we're gonna see how to use that in the next video.